Who doesn't love going to the movies? It's one of the most fun pastimes. Whether you're at home watching from the comfort of your couch or at the theaters with popcorn and delicious snacks, it's bound to be a great time. Except for when you're watching a movie that makes things awkward between you and your parents. Today, we are going to be discussing some movies that are guaranteed to make you and your parents cringe. But before we get started, be sure to click on that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. And we have a question for you. Can you guess what feature film these emojis are showing? Find out at the end of the video. Hey, Jimmy. Just wanted to say sweet dreams. Yeah, yeah, sweet dreams. Good night, Mom. Yes, good night. American Pie. While this movie might have a title that sounds pretty harmless, we can assure you that you definitely would not want to watch this with your parents. When it first came out, many audience members thought it was just another teen comedy. They were so, so wrong. For starters, this film has tons of jokes that you wouldn't want your parents knowing you understand, let alone have to explain them. The film follows four high school seniors on their quest to lose their virginity before they graduate. Oh boy, now that's bound to start some awkward combos with the rents. The setup is pretty cringy to watch with parents, but the cringiest scene of all happens early in the film, when Jim, played by Jason Biggs, practices having intercourse with an actual apple pie. Yeah, they went there. We guarantee you won't ever look at pie the same way again, and neither will your parents. Plus, there is the awkwardness of Jim's dad offering him sex advice, comments about about Stifler's mom and Michelle talking about that one time at band camp. Plus, do you really want to explain to your parents what a MILF is? We know we don't. Just avoid watching this with them at all costs. Who are you? My name's Aileen. My real name's Al, but truth be told, I ain't from this planet, y'all. Spring Breakers. When you're in college, there is nothing you look forward to more than the breaks. Summer break, winter break, and of course, spring break. It's a time to take a break after all of the stressful midterms and finals. Most students look forward to catching up on some much needed sleep, but it's also time for fun and of course some parties and vacation. Spring Breaker starts off with four party hungry girls played by Vanessa Hudgens, Selena Gomez, Ashley Benson, and Rachel Corin who want to go party. So they hold up a fast food joint with some water guns, grab some cash, and go party. But there are consequences. Always remember the consequences. Lesson number one, don't ever take something that doesn't belong to you, kids. They are arrested and sent to court. They are bailed out by a drug and arms dealer named Alien, a cartoonish gangster rapper played by James Franco, who introduces them to an even more intense criminal life. The film at times feels like something out of Girls Gone Wild, and at other times it's like a wonderful avant-garde visual landscape. The film portrays a spring break as a scary ritual that segues from crazy party to crazy crime story. There's just no need to worry your parents this much. Not all all spring breakers are like this, Mom. We promise. We found it stashed around your bedroom. Oh, Jesus, Evie. I had to. You don't get it. Oh, no, I get it. 13. Let's reminisce for a moment. Do you remember back when you were 13 years old? You were probably in middle school, enjoying delicious snacks, hanging out with friends, and worrying about what outfit was going to make you look the coolest, while still following your parents' dress code. Or maybe you were a little rebellious and got an extra ear piercing. Hmm. Or maybe things were a lot more serious and concerning. The film 13 explores the world of every parent's nightmare. It's centered around a young girl named Tracy, your typical teenage good girl. She's studious and always listens to her mom, until the cool bad girl Eve Evie enters her life. Confident and controlled, she takes Tracy under her broken wing. Tracy adopts a new life of makeup, more revealing clothing, piercings, drugs, sexuality, and of course, shoplifting. Look, it's normal to disagree and even reject some of your parents' ideals, but this film takes it to an extreme. It's basically a tale of worst case scenario, complete with strong language, drug use, rage, and all kinds of bad girl behavior. We just don't recommend watching it with your folks, unless you're up for a serious conversation or stricter rules after the film. Just stay in school, kids. You might be happier if you put it out there a little bit, you know? Wear some makeup, wear a skirt once in a while. Jesus. Get some attention. Diary of a Teenage Girl. This 2015 film has a very sweet and innocent sounding title, doesn't it? The title will quite possibly evoke memories of being in middle and high school and all the silly things you would do. So naturally, this just seems like a fun coming of age story, right? For a split second, we confused it with The Diary of a Wimpy Kid, which is a kid's movie. But we implore you to please, please not do that. This is definitely not a movie you would want to watch with kids, and most likely not your parents. The film is based on a graphic novel, The Diary of a Teenage Girl, an account 
in words and pictures by Phoebe Glockner. The film is set in 1976 and follows the teenage character Minnie, who is a typical teen and longs for love, acceptance, and a sense of purpose. She begins a love affair with her mom's boyfriend, Monroe, whom she calls the handsomest man in the world. Well, that in and of itself is pretty awkward to watch with your mom, considering she's only 15 and Monroe is a fully grown adult. Minnie makes audio tapes which serve as her diary in which she shares her desires, dreams, fears, and secrets. The film as a whole is a great coming-of-age story, but definitely not one you'd want to watch with mom and dad. We actually met in college. Yeah. Aww. How did you meet Teddy? I saw him. He saw me. Neighbors. It's easy and innocent enough to assume that a movie starring Zac Efron would probably be safe for family movie night, right? Come on now. He was in those adorable high school musical films for crying out loud. He's got a face of a porcelain doll. Can't get much more wholesome than that. Well, Disney Channel stars have to grow up at some point. And what better way to do that than star in a raunchy comedy with the raunch master himself, Seth Rogen. Rogen stars as Mac, who is married to Kelly, played by Rose Byrne. They are a suburban married couple who have an adorable baby girl. But when the house next door is bought by a college fraternity, things start to clash. Rogan and Byrne try to show that they are hip, but end up complaining about noise keeping their daughter awake. So an all-out suburban war begins. The comedy is a tad bit overwhelmingly about drugs, sex, language, and pranks that are definitely not appropriate for teen audiences. There's non-stop gross-out humor about lactation, genitalia, and sexual situations. If you can get past the crude laughs, there is something there about becoming an adult. But unless you've got parents who like gutter minded jokes, chances are they won't enjoy this film. It's the new boat! Euro Trip. High school senior Scott Thomas is a good student and all-around good guy who is about to graduate. And on his graduation day, he gets dumped by his longtime girlfriend, Fiona. Devastated, he turns to his friends, among them his German pen pal, Mike. But when Mike tries to make advances on him now that Scott is single, Scott sends an angry message. He then finds out that Mike is actually a girl named Mike spelled M-I-E-K-E. -E. So naturally, he decides to go to Berlin to be with her. His friends Cooper and twins Jenny and Jamie tag along for the ride to meet the girl of Scotty's dreams. Sounds like a fun buddy comedy, right? And it is, but it takes Raunchy to a whole new level. Although the film does discuss the importance of one's future after high school and being free and spontaneous, it's not something you'd be comfortable watching with the folks. It has every possible kind of material that your parents might find inappropriate, from sexual references, sexual situations, nudity, bondage, drinking, and drug use. The jokes are pretty funny if that's your type of humor. This movie was made for much older teens and adults, and while you might find it hilarious, we suggest maybe watching this without the parents first. Yo, oh, oh, everybody. Yo. Yeah, why don't you let your cheerleaders play for you? At least they win shit occasionally. <laughs> oh man, is that the best you got? Yeah, come on, bring it on, butt plug. Bring it on. Nothing says high school teen movie like a bunch of cheerleaders, right? Cheerleading, sports, and the popular kids totally rings a bell, right? In Rancho Carn High School, a senior girl, Torrance, lives her whole life around competitive cheerleading. Her perfect life becomes even more unreal when she is elected captain of her squad, the five-time national champions, which basically means her senior year is pretty much set to be like the most totally perfect year ever. Except for when one of the girls on the squad breaks her leg. Then disaster strikes when they find out their award-winning routines were stolen from another squad. African-American cheerleaders who couldn't afford to go to the national competitions. Aside from the silly and sassy high school cheerleader drama, the film does touch upon the issue of white appropriation of black culture. So what makes it cringy to watch this with the parents? There's so much inappropriate dialogue in this movie, it almost makes you forget that it's intended to be for teens. But throw in some rude hand gestures, sass, and high school problems, and you remember that it is most definitely about teens. He's such a little skis. Give me your phone. But you're not gonna call him, right? Do you think I'm an idiot? No. Mean Girls. One of the most iconic and memorable movies of our generations is hands down Mean Girls. It's pretty much the most quotable movie in recent history, and well, if you haven't seen it yet, then you can't sit with us. That's really interesting. 
But if you have, then you go, Glenn Coco. This film was written by SNL alum and queen of improv and comedy, Tina Fey. At the height of Lindsay Lohan's career, this movie was a smash hit. It follows the main character, Katie, who moves back to the States after being homeschooled and living in Africa. She has a run-in with the popular girls in school, Regina George, Karen, and Gretchen, aka The Plastics. Katie's friends Damon and Janice create a plan to have Katie join them and sabotage them, but it backfires when Katie turns into a clone of Regina. In the end, the film teaches us a very valuable lesson about self-acceptance and accepting others. But there are a few cringy moments, like the whole gym teacher sleeping with students, or when Regina's mom offers the girls alcohol, or how about when Regina's mom walks in on her and her boyfriend and offers them condoms. What kind of mom does that? A responsible mom. That's who. The film not only left us with the lesson, but it also taught us to always ask the important questions like, is butter a carb? By second period, we apparently had private jokes. Easy A. Before she was the tap dancing, singing, Oscar winning darling of La La Land, Emma Stone was a teen movie star. She won us over with her adorable yet zany personality in real life. She was also able to bring some of that self assured bluntness and quirkiness to the screen in the teen film Easy A. The premise is pretty simple. A young high school girl lies about sleeping with her friend because he doesn't want other to know he is gay. While they are at a party, they go into a room and proceed to bounce, jump up and down in bed, smack the wall, and make noises while jumping. Essentially, they fake having relations while at a party. Stone's character begins doing this for the other nerdy guys. It comes from a good place as she's trying to help them seem cool. They trade her stuff in order to do this, which is a watered down, she then develops a bit of a reputation for promiscuity because rumor mills run rampant in high school. She loses control of the situation, which is a good lesson to learn. But the theme of sex is rampant in the film, so unless you're okay with talking about this with your parents, you should watch this on your own. Was all the stolen liquor, Danny Ocean, you hide up your butt? <laughs> Piss off! I was gonna do it, but there was a security breach. You never would have done it. Super bad. So, we're pretty sure you're all familiar with the character McLovin in this movie. But, did you know that Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg wrote the film when they were just teens? The main characters are exaggerated versions of their younger selves. On the surface, Super Bad is the ultimate bromance. It follows three dorky high school boys on a simple journey to do some raunchy high school stuff, like bring alcohol to a party to try and impress some cute girls. But if you look past the genitalia jokes and typical hormonal teen boys, the film actually expresses the anxiety of growing up. The emotions of leaving home for the first time and growing apart from friends is what makes this film such a great coming-of-age movie. Reasons why it might be awkward to watch with the folks? Well, there's some sexual situations, looking at pornography and quite a few F-bombs, underage drinking and some drug use. But if they're fine with raunchy humor, then by all means, just be prepared to explain typical high school days to your boring old parents. <laughs> parents are dumb. Thank you for being such a nice guy about it all. Oh, that's okay. At least you don't have a black eye from it. Well, there you have it, friends. These are just some of the movies that you should not watch with your parents. Are there any that you've seen with parents? Are there any that we might have missed? Let us know in the comments below. Oh, but now, the moment you've all been waiting for. The answer to the emoji quiz is... Well, did you get it? Let us know. And as always, thank you so much for watching.